Hey everybody, Hendo from the Three Band EQ. Uh, just driving home from Gilroy, just bought um, some stuff for myself, for my guitar, my guitar rig. Um, quick little update. So, another thing I want to talk about is that um, one of my more favorite uh, rig rundowns uh, happened uh, with Chris Shiflitz from the rock band Foo Fighters. Uh, I have been a big fan of Foo Fighters since, I guess, the inception of the band. The Color and the Shape came out in 1997, and that is one of my favorite records. I have to say, all the uh, singles off that record were are still bangers. The songs that I will turn the radio up when they come on. Monkey Wrench, Everlong, and like uh, My Hero, as corny as that sounds. Uh, but ever, like obviously Everlong is a very popular and awesome song. It's my go-to like uh, riffage when I, you know, go to drop D. If I'm at the guitar store and I pick up a guitar and it's a drop D, Everlong. No, like no questions asked. Anyhow, so going back to Chris Shiflett, talking about Chris Shiflett, he wasn't on that record. He didn't join until like after like like the the one that has the weird heart on it, like one by one. Anyways, Chris Shiflett was is I don't really know what Foo Fighter status is right now, but he's the he's the lead guitar player. He's the shredder in the band, which like uh, features like a three band attack, three guitar attack. Um, but he's the lead dude. And the coolest thing that I got from his guitar rig rundown was the idea of, and this is not new, I've heard this before, but for whatever reason, hold on, I gotta pass somebody. Um, uh, a JB in the bridge, 59 in the uh, in the neck. I, I've featured um, new to me, by Bernie H65, which has, you know, appropriately like uh, inexpensive guitar uh, pickups. I am upgrading that guitar for whatever reason, probably because it's a fun project and it's my 90s guitar. When I pick that thing up, I think of the 90s. And when I think of the 90s, I think of the Foo Fighters and uh, Chris Shifflett, also of no use for name. Um, I think, he played on uh, Making Friends and, uh, oh, the one with the, uh, the water skiers on the front. After like, after like 1998, 1999, or 2000, I stopped paying attention to like album names because I'm a doofus. But that's also not entirely true. But anyways, Chris Shifflett played on both. Are fantastic records. Like, that's what I loved about Foo Fighters. Uh, not Foo Fighters. No use for a name. It's just like great skate punk with actually like legit shredding. With that being said, all my favorite like uh, skate punk bands all had shredder guitar players, except for um, Good Riddance. Uh, Luke Pabbage is in my top five, ten favorite guitar players, and he's a rhythm dude. He doesn't shred, but uh, he's kind of the exception in the rule because like. No, no effects, we've got El Jefe, he shreds. Like uh, Chris Shiflett was one of the uh, shredders for No Use For Name, who had a bunch of lead guitar players. Um, Brian Baker shreds, uh, even though he's not necessarily escape, well, never mind. Forget I said that, Bad Religion is the skate punk band. Uh, uh, there's Big Bitch from uh, Lagwagon. I think he's the shredder like in Lagwagon. And both dudes, like in, um, uh, oh God, Strung Out are both Shredders. I think they, they kind of go back and forth with like solos and stuff. Even though like their more recent records are more metal than skate, skate punk, uh, their, first, their first three or four records are awesome. Anyways, going back to Chris Shiflett and me building up um, my cheap ass 90s guitar with very expensive guitar pickups. I upgraded, the first first thing I did with that guitar also, I upgraded the, uh, the uh, tuners, the locking tuners, just because that's my preference. I like break, I like breaking strings because I like playing my guitar very, very hard. Um, it's a, I'm a pain in the ass. And changing 
guitar strings with a locking tuner is so much more easy than anything else you, you can, any other situation. I don't know what the hell I'm trying to say right now. Locking tuners, locking tuners are the way to go in my humble opinion. Anyhow, yeah, so I just got back from the guitar center, but not only did I buy like uh, that multiple, uh, what's it called, a guitar stand, I also bought a pair of strings, which are 1152s, where they're the hybrid slinkies, or something slinkies, yeah, the 1152s. Those are my favorite. And I also got a Seymour Duncan 59 bridge humbucker, which I'm gonna put in the neck. Um, I don't give a shit what it's designated. I, I, bridges are always like, uh, if you don't know, bridges are always like bound to be a little more hot than neck. I am not much of a neck guitar player, but I am setting up my guitar, my H65 for JB and uh, Seymour Duncan 59, because that's what Chris Shiflet does, and damn it, I'm, I'm doing this 90s guitar right, because I'm crazy, and I've got money to spend, or credit to spend. Yep, yeah, we're talking about building up uh, our 90s guitars. And talking about 90s guitar players. And driving home on Highway 101, which is kind of shady. Anywho, any thoughts or any, anything like that you guys want to talk about, like 90s guitars, your favorite 90s albums, or your favorite 90s like updates? Like, um, I guess, like, I've always been a big fan of the Les Paul style guitars. I'm going to stop this video and continue on talking about 90s guitars because I'm going to do two videos because I need content. Anyway. Okay. Okay, guys. Thank you for uh, stopping by and checking out the video. It's Hendo from uh, 3 Band EQ. Ugh. It's Hendo from 3 Band EQ. Like and subscribe. Hit the icon, see what's up. Thank you for checking out. If you stayed this long, Appreciate it too. Later.